Today, I want to present Mineta Porcupine Mines. We're a Canada, we're a uh, base company, Ontario focused, and we're listed on the main board, the TSX, under the ticker ME. We also have a listing on the you know OTCQX and within the German exchanges. Today, I want to present our main project, which is located in the Timmins camp. We're in the process of putting together what is a major gold project. It's one of North America's largest undeveloped gold projects, and it's a growing project. And I just want wish everyone to yeah to follow the slides as we go through the 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 development of the project, our plans, and the current program. Uh, Gary, sorry to interrupt. Mark here again. I know you're a much better looking human than I am. I was just wondering if you'd mind turning your camera on for the presentation. Thank oh, you okay. so much. Sorry for that. Thank you. Just do do want to point out there are forward looking statements in this presentation. If, so Mineta Porcupine Mines is very much focused on the Timmins camp. The focus is gold and Timmins is, of course, Canada's largest, most prolific gold mining camp. And we as a junior company have consolidated a, a major land holding in the camp. Um, we updated our resource late last year um, and, you know, combined put together 5.5 total million ounces. Earlier this year, we completed an acquisition of the adjacent garrison project from 03 Mining. That took us to a total of 8.4 million ounces, of which there are 4 million ounces indicated and 4.4 million ounces inferred. Uh, both ourselves and 03 Mining completed PEAs on two of the deposit areas last year. These were done independently before the project was consolidated. We completed a very solid PEA on the Southwest Underground Gold Resource and, and O3 Mining completed a very solid uh, PEA with very rough bust uh, economics on the Garrison Open Pit Resource. We've now combined those into one project and we're talking about a much larger, significantly, in, um, sin significantly increased uh, scope and what will be significantly increased uh, production profile. This is now one of the largest undeveloped gold projects in North America. We made a number of new discoveries uh, last year. We're back in there now drilling out there, looking to expand the uh, resource base that we'll be subjecting to further studies, you know, as we m move the project forward. We do have significant regional scale exploration potential. We are drilling that and we're in the middle of a 70,000 metre drill program at the moment. The Tower Gold project occurs 100 kilometres to the east of Timmins. Timmins is the sort of a main centre, a large city with excellent infrastructure, good skilled workforce. This is very much a gold mining camp. It's Canada's largest gold mining camp. Over 85 million ounces have been produced in the camp over the last 100 years. Great jurisdiction, good safe uh, investment um, uh, place to, uh, jurisdiction with excellent infrastructure. Just want to point out that we, we we sit on what is called the Desta Porcupine Fault Zone. It's a major suture in the Archean uh, terrain in the area, and it's along this main suture and fault zone that all all of the gold mines occur on second order um, structures. There are really only two northeast strongly dilational structures in the area. One is in Timmins, where there's probably eighty of the eighty five million ounces that have been produced. The second north northeast dilational jog is, is the jog that we control and are currently building up a very large resource base on. A looking in and a blow up onto the, the actual project itself. This is Highway 101, major regional highway, sealed highway along here. There's all the infrastructure, electricity, uh, and other requirements required for developing a project. This is the old Golden Highway project. There was 5.5 million ounces there as of December last year. 2.8 million ounces underground, 2.7 million ounces open pit. Garrison occurs just immediately to the northeast, five kilometres away, 2.9 million ounces in open pits. Uh, many of these are open. We, we have recently put out press releases that have showed the uh, strike extent to the east of Windjammer South here to the east. When, uh, the new discovery last year, Westaway Underground Resource, 600,000 ounces. We've been drilling out the extensions of that, and we are now currently drilling out the extensions of the other open pits. Windjammer South, what will be an open pit at Southwest, and the 55 zone. We also see upside potential in and around the Garrison Project, which we'll be testing uh, later this year. And 
we're looking to consolidate ground in the project as well. So we're looking to move this forward, consolidate, expand, and grow the resource base this year. Looking at the geology of the camp, again, this is the Highway 101. Remember, these uh, deposits occur immediately adjacent to a major regional highway. This is the Golden Highway camp. The, all the deposits occur within, well, most of the deposits occur within a large Tamiskamine basin here. It's an accretionary basin through which a major banded iron formation sequence occurs. That same sequence occurs again up in the garrison belt and again within the same predominantly Tamiskamine uh, age sedimentary basin within the garrison project. These occur along splays of the Desta Porcupine Fault Zone. The mineralization occurs in extensional, dominantly extensional veins occurring peripheral to these uh, splays of the Desta Porcupine Fault. We currently have just over 550 million shares outstanding. Our share price today actually is just over 40 cents. Our share price today is about, our market cap today is just over 200 million. We have 25 million in cash, no debt. Uh, we have good analyst coverage. We have four very uh, well-respected uh, analysts from the street who are covering us all with very good uh, uh, target prices, everywhere from 70 to 80 cents. We have great institutional ownership. Many of the big gold fronds in North America are, uh, uh, own, own a significant portion of Manata Porcupine and they've they've continued to ex to support us and fund the company over the last two years and they see the direction we're going and they see where we want to take this company in the future. Very strong board, a great uh, diverse skill set to, to cover all of the challenges ahead, developing such a large project as we move forward. Lots of experience here, discovering, developing, operating and selling projects. Looking at a long section along the, the belt, this is about four kilometers here at Golden Highway. Remember 5.5 .5 million ounces here. Four kilometers here at Garrison, uh, 2.9 million ounces here. I will point out that there are currently no underground resources at Garrison. So this mineralization you see here below the pits is, is, is just that. It's mineralization that has not been captured in a resource update. We see the potential to expand the smaller pits to the east, as well as capture some underground resources. And that will form part of our drill program this year. At Golden Highway, we've been drilling out the expansion here at Westaway. This is the new discovery from last year, underground resource. We have been drilling out the extensions of the 55 pit as well into in pit infill drilling. We're currently drilling out and connecting the Windjammer South open pit. Remember there's 2.1 million ounces here at Windjammer South. We're looking to expand this out to the east. We put a press release out about six weeks ago that showed seven to 800 metres strike extent uh, potential here with good mineralization east of Windjammer South. We are also looking to connect the Windjammer South to collect the connect and capture the near surface low grade mineralization here at Southwest. So we're looking at significant resource expansion potential at Windjammer South. Oh, underground resource expansion here at Westaway and open pit resource in here at 55. So lots of ounces to be added. On the project, we have a very good working relationship with the Wagashig First Nations. We we expanded our exploration agreement to cover the, the recently acquired O3 ground under the same exploration agreement. We have a number of contracts with them. We have a good, and they provide a number of services and work with us in the development of this project. We're well, well underway on our environmental baseline studies. Um, we are continuing to uh, complete these surveys, conduct these surveys, and look to have the project in a very good standing when it comes time for permitting and moving the project forward through the you know feasibility into development stage. This year is really about adding resources. It's about expanding and finding the the, the total sort of resource endowment for the project. This is a map showing a map view of the previous slide. This is showing where we're currently focused and where we're looking to add ounces. Here at 55, both within the pit and pit extensions, underground resources at Westaway. This is the new discovery from last year. So 600,000 ounces last year and a new underground resource. We're now drilling out the extensions of those, of that deposit. We've connected Windjammer South to the southwest and we'll be looking to push the open pit here to the west and we, as mentioned we have been we put a press release out we're now drilling out to connect the significant mineralization we found here east of Windjammer south so seven eight hundred meters to the east plus infill the filling the pit to the north the south 
at Garrison, the adjacent Garrison uh, deposit. Remember, it's only uh, five kilometres away. We see the potential to add this underground, currently unclassified mineralisation into a resource category, as well as test the open pit potential here uh, to the east of the current main pits. The current resource tables, as it stands and was updated in December last year, it looks like this. At Southwest, we will be looking to expand and add an open pit resource where we will be looking to drill out the extensions of Windjammer South. We're currently doing that. West away, we've been testing the extensions of the underground resource. 55, we are targeting uh, open pit extensions and infill drilling. And we're looking to add the new uh, halfway deposit here, which will be an open pit resource. We will also be testing the eastern Garkon pits, looking to push those out to the east, as well as uh, drilling out and potentially adding underground resources resources here as well. So currently 5.6 million ounces open pit, 2.8 million ounces underground, all of which we're looking to expand and grow this year. Upon completion of the drill program, we'll be looking to update the PEA. The PEA, oh sorry, update the resource and then the PEA. The PEA will be We'll look at the previous PA, which had a combined total of 200,000 ounces. We're looking to significantly increase that, probably more than doubling that. We think with the exploration potential and the new resources we have at hand, we'll significantly be able to, to um, support a much higher production profile, probably more than 400,000 ounces a year. We've already shown that the metallurgy is compatible for all the deposits. They, all of the ore can be treated in one processing plant. By combining the two projects, we see significant capital uh, cost reductions through synergies and not needing to duplicate certain functions. We see the ability to mine uh, and blend high-grade underground ore with open pit ore. That significantly increases the head grade and thus the size of the plant will be significantly decreased. We see the ability to, to uh, bring this into production at a significantly lower capital and cost than many of our peer group due to the higher potential head grade. And we see the, the updated expanded PEA as having a significant valuation um, upgrade to the project based on a significantly expanded production profile and significantly improved economics. Uh, so this will, be, you know, this will be quite a game changer when we complete the resource later this year, update the PEA and come out with a new production profile with a significantly increased valuation. And we see that as, you know, the direction the company will be going for, going to, and that's the way we're currently planning the, you know, the development of the project. Looking at an isometric view down along the camp, we see here the small open pits at Garcon. We can, we have the potential to, we think, to uh, expand those. We will be drill testing those this year as part of the 70,000 metre program. We see the ability to test and potentially model and include some underground resources at Garrison. There's currently 2.9 million ounces at Garrison, only in open pit resources. We're looking to add underground and, and additional open pit resources there. Remember, there's a very good starter pit here at Garrison. There's a million ounces at a low strip ratio, 2.7 to 1 at over one gram per tonne, outcropping that can be mined from day one. So we see a very good you know, synergy of adding that and including that in the mine plan going forward. Halfway, we put a press release out six weeks ago that shows the potential to expand this significantly to the east. We um, we will we have currently have drills in there at the moment. We have six rigs running and a seventh on the way. We will be drilling out the resources here. We've given enough guidance. We've done proof of concept drilling and we've we've put that into the market already. We'll now be drilling that, including that this year. We'll also be in doing infill drilling in and around the Windjammer South Pit, converting a lot of the waste, which is present only due to the lack of drilling. We uh, have been drilling in and around Westerway. Those results will be coming out soon. As soon as we get the assays back, we've been looking to expand the underground resource here. And we've been drilling out the extensions at 55, both in pit to convert waste to ore, as well as expansion drilling. So lots of ounces to be added here, underground, open pit, and looking to significantly expand, you know, the current resource base. Remembering 2.8 million ounces here underground now, 2.7 in open pits, and we see the ability to add a new open pit as well as the southwest open pit and connect that to Windjammer South. So significant resource 
upside and which will be added to our, you know, to the project during this year. Look at two of the recent press releases. This, the first release at Southwest, this is in the area we call the gap zone. So this is the area between Windjammer South and Southwest. It's an area where there's currently no footprint. There's no resource. The, the drilling was done over 700 meter wide, a long zone, 200 meters wide. We, we intersected significant mineralization in an area which previously had not been recognized as being mineralized and had not been uh, drill tested. We are in there now drilling that and, and looking to connect. The first results showed significant down uh, plunge extensions of the Windjammer South mineralization as well as significant mineralization near surface and, you know, to the south of uh, Southwest. Remember, Southwest has been modeled as a high-grade underground resource using a three-gram cutoff. These are steep high-grade structures. We'll be looking to model a significantly larger low-grade resource here moving forward using a lower-grade cutoff, similar to what we used at Windjammer South, which was a 0.3 cutoff, and that captured uh, 2.1 million ounces. To the east of Windjammer South, remember this is the 2.1 million ounce uh, open pit resource. There was historical drilling under the resource that had significant widths above cutoff grade. The pit did not pull to capture these because there was no drilling above or to the east. We've now done proof of concept drilling over seven, 800 meter strike length. This is the recent drilling, which had results up to 75 meters at a gram, 10 meters at three grams, which significant which will pull these resources to surface and we now see the ability to extend this pit significantly to the east and remember in the southwest area to the west we're thinking of we're looking to pull the pit to the west as well so looking to expand that 2.1 million ounces both to the east and to the west looking at our current valuation this is based you know our current market cap versus you know the Previous uh, two small PEAs, remember, we'll be significantly expanding these and these will be significantly larger. So we have significant upside for um, valuation. Trading at our peer group, about $75 an ounce. We should really be trading at about $1.60 an ounce. Um, the analysts have been giving guidance here of, you know, 70, 80 cents per share. We're currently trading in and around 40 cents. So lots of upside there for our current shareholders, as well as new shareholders to benefit from a what is a significant resource and a significantly expanding resource in a very safe jurisdiction, you know, in a very infrastructure rich environment. So lots of, you know, lots of benefits in developing a project in the area, area, low carbon footprint, low and significant capital cost savings. This project is, you know, has really come together rapidly in the last uh, little while, really since November, uh, December last year, we, we jumped to 5.5 million ounces. In February, we jumped to 8.4 million total ounces, and we're currently looking to go some, to a number significantly higher. This will result in you know, significant re-rating and valuation um, increase for our shareholders. Remembering we have 8.4 million ounces now, 4 million ounces indicated and 4.4 inferred, and we'll be looking to, to expand those both in the underground and open pit scenarios. We're well underway on a 70,000-meter drill program. There'll be a good new... Uh, news flow through the year. We're waiting on assays at the moment, but as soon as those come in, we'll be we'll be putting those out to the market. List of all, all the work that we'll be doing this year, we have been testing the, you know, the Westerway underground resource extensions. We're now drilling out the halfway resource. We're expanding the Southwest resource. We will be modeling that as well, where it has been historically already drilled out, and we're connecting it with the Windjammer South resource. The Windjammer South Pit, of course, will be expanded to include these resources, as well as adding resources within the pit, which are currently waste due to in pit infill drilling. We have, we did show that we are able to ex expand the Discovery Underground resource. Um, we will be doing the in pit infill, as mentioned, to reduce the strip ratio, increase ounces, and improve the economics. We think we can expand the starter pit at Garcon. Uh, we see that as being open. We see the ability to add underground resources at Garrison as well. And we'll be looking to do that as part of this drill program. We will be doing ongoing metallurgical test work to confirm that every, all of the new deposits and areas of mineralization can be treated in the same uh, conventional processing plant, which has already been, you know, has been shown in the previous studies. We'll complete the resource update and then an, a significantly expanded PEA will be conducted upon the resource update with a significantly enlarged scope and thus significantly increased um, 
valuation for the project. The milestones, you know, moving forward for Mineta Porcupine Mines and the tower project, we completed the, you know, the initial district consolidation with the acquisition of the Garrison project from 03 Mining. Um, we are currently well underway on the drill program. We've, we've finished more than 70, 30,000 uh, 30, metres of the 70,000 metre program. We'll con complete the rest of that drilling and we're, we're flat out on that at the moment. Rigs are turning as we speak. Conduct the metallurgical test work, do the expanded resource update and combine the uh, combine all of this into a significantly larger PEA. That, that means rolling next year with a you know larger PEA in tow, we'll know where we need to do feasibility, pre-feasibility style drilling, where we need to do the studies and what that program will be. And that's what next year's program will be. Rolling that into a feasibility study, noting that we're already well underway with our you know, with our environmental baseline, our community engagement, and we're, you know, looking to fast track this as we move forward. We have lots of optionality here between open pits, underground resources. Remember, this is a significant new camp over a 17 kilometer strike length, along which we currently have 8.4 million ounces and growing. And we think this will be a, you know, a major new project for, for Ontario, for Canada and for North America. Um, on that note, I think I'll pass it back to the moderator and if there's any questions. I appreciate that, Gary. Thank you very much. A, a terrific presentation, lots of details, always helpful for our viewers. And of course, this, this brings many questions from around the world. So we'll start to lob a few, a few of these questions your way. Uh, and I just want to comment again, seeing that you're a chief geologist as well as CEO, uh, quite a wonderful combination. And uh, that leads me to our first question because our team at VidConference does do some heavy research. And I just want to share that uh, since you joined the company in 2017, you and your team have grown mineral resources significantly from about 1.7 million gold ounces to 8.4 million gold ounces today. That's a huge increase. We're curious, how did you accomplish that and how much larger can you see the resources growing into the future? Well, it's yeah, it didn't happen over. This is based on you know a lot of work over a long period of time. There's been people working on this project for you know, 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. There was a large resource developed um, in the 2011, 12, 13 period, um, we've really just, we've used that as our base. We've just applied um, a little more rigor, some geological constraints, and we've used that as the base for moving forward. We use all the historical drilling core data as well as all the historical knowledge. It really did set us up for where we are today. We did the big drill program last year, but that was based on, you know, two years, two and a half years of relogging core assaying core that hadn't been uh, assayed before and pulling together a new geological model. Mm. That came together with a new uh, discovery last year, the Westaway discovery, which we were, you know, were quite thrilled about. It was a major new dis discovery. And then that ended up cumulatively adding a lot of ounces, you know, all at once. It, they didn't all happen at once. So, you know, it was over a period of time. Right. They've, they've laid the groundwork now for sig more significant resource um Updates. We have the new halfway discovery, so we're drilling that out. Mm -hmm. We're expanding that Westaway deposit. We now see we can push the Windjammer South Pit into the southwest area. We're drilling out that gap area now. Uh, we'll be doing pit infill drilling. So we can this this is going to get significantly large by the end the end of the year. I'd be surprised if it wasn't a double digit, you know, uh, resource. Remembering that we haven't even drilled out a lot of the underground potential, all of the Garrison area. Um, significant mineralization there, so we're looking to add some underground resources there. Okay. And we've only drilled out west away and southwest within within the Golden Highway. There's significant mm -hmm. underground potential under the other resources. Remember, this is Archie and Greenstone. The, once you get onto mineralization, they it tends to go for well for kilometers, you know, to depth. So this is mm -hmm. all outside for any investors going forward. This is, as I kind of pointed out, hinted in that first slide we've really found another gold camp here this is this is timmins mm -hmm. you know 2021 let's say um and yeah. we, we're going to end up with multiple deposits over the 17 kilometer strike length i think uh, over the years to come terrific lots of potential there thank you gary uh my understanding is that the company has a 70,000 meter drill program running this year it's more than double than last year so what are your promising target areas and when can we expect a resource update on that uh we're we're hoping to have the drilling done by the end of the Q3. Um, the current, the, 
the current delay is really the assays, and this is a little out of our control. All the all the laboratories are full with COVID. They've been un unable to expand and bring in new people. Yeah. That's the only, and it's a little out of our control, but we are working with the lab. So if we can, we'll get it out this year. We, we will have the drilling done. We just hope we can have all those assays back. We, we've already started modeling some of the zones. We're, we keep trying to keep ahead of where we're at. We're already talking to people about, you know, putting the resource together, the methodology. We're already talking to people about the resultant PEA, you know, we're looking at larger engineering groups to do that, those that have actually built and constructed mines. So we are yeah. in the ground and we hope to have that resource by the end of the year. If it does slip, it'll, I think it'll be out of our control, but um, we certainly hope not, but we'll keep we'll keep the market informed and we'll keep moving forward. Like I say, the drills are rig running and uh, calls coming in, being processed and everything's going well. We just, we just want those assays back and get those out to our, to the market and to our shareholders. Fair enough. End result. Well, we certainly touched on potential. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the potential starter pit at Garrison and potentially how soon you can see cash flowing from that? Uh, well, that was one of the reasons we acquired the project. It, it has a very good starter pit. It's outcropping. There, there has been um, bulk samples done there. They did all grade reconciliation earlier in the decade, last decade there. They had good reconciliation, so they confirmed the, you know, the grade they had. So it's our problem. So we see that as a really good starter pit. You can be mining ore, processing, processing ore from day one, mm -hmm. while we either develop what are our larger open pit resources, uh, which require a certain amount of pre-strip, and also, of course, our higher grade underground resources, which require development, you know, potentially a decline initially rather than a shaft, but developing that. So we see currently see the starter pit as the best option, but mm -hmm. it, it may work out that it, we develop declines before that. We can you can develop declines during expiration, as as part of expiration under flow through funding. Mm -hmm. Get underground, drill out those resources underground, and and have do some test mining to ensure you know that you can mine them as predicted. And remember, these in the PEA those were considered to be bulk tonnage underground operations. That's why the the great cash cost the the bulk tonnage tonnage that came out of those. So it may be a, a combination of the both, the open pit, starter pit, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, some higher grade underground early, earlier in the in the mine sequence. Okay, good to know that. Thanks, Gary. Uh, let's turn our focus to cash flow here, obviously a key territory in the realm. And how far do you think your, your treasury will get you along some of the milestones that you, you've mentioned? Uh, well, we have 25 million in the bank with, at the start of this quarter anyway, at the end of the last quarter. We are burning through it. We have, you know, a lot of rigs running, um, a lot of geos working and, there's a lot of work going on at the moment, but we're looking to the budget for this year will be to burn through 13 million of that by the by Q1 next year. Mm -hmm. So we'll still have about 12 million. We see that as enough to do a similar size drill program to start many of our uh, pre feasibility studies. Remember that budget I mentioned includes a resource update, includes the metallurgical test work, yes. also includes the PEA. So those are included in this year's budget. So yeah, we're we're well funded for two years really, but. Oh. We'll we'll look at how the market is, the share price, and mm -hmm. and use an opportune time to you know to keep ourselves uh, funded. Fair, fair. Thank you, John. Asks Gary, uh, is the new resource estimate expected to be made public in quarter one, twenty twenty two? Well, we are. We're still hoping to have it out uh, this year. We're hoping to have it twenty twenty one. Like as I mentioned, it's going to come down to the assay turnaround, mm -hmm. and the whole industry is having this problem. Um, we're actually getting better turnaround than some of our peers, but the, the things do change. But if we can get it out this year, we will. And if we don't, we we may have to announce, give guidance to the market. But the program's going along fine. The drilling, the you know, the processing of the core and the modeling, it'll just be that it'll just be that one issue with assay turnaround. Okay. Good to know. Thank you very much for that. Uh, next question will be what does the rest of 2021 have in store for a minute? And what are the plans for 22? Uh, we've talked a bit about cash position, but just overarching and, and big picture thinking this year compared to next year. Can you provide some thoughts on that? Okay, so last year we we did a PEA on our, our largest underground deposit. Mm -hmm. O3 Mining did a PEA on the Garrison project. So we had two two good, solid, robust PAs. One was for an underground operation. Mm -hmm. One was for open pit. We did look at consolidating those and moving forward with that. Mm -hmm. But due to the expiration success we'd had last year, there was so much low-hanging fruit, so many ounces sitting out there. We knew Southwest had not been modelled near mm -hmm. surface. No one had tested, you know, we had not tested the gap between them. 
when you had the discovery at halfway that had not been upgraded to a resource mm -hmm. west away the large you know new underground resource had not been drilled out our last drill hole there had a 30 meter wide vein mm. you know intercept with uh, three grams per ton it was a big you know wow. big meaty um piece of resource there sure, yeah. so we felt to do justice to any up, updated um PEA, we really need to do this next round of drilling. Also, the pit infill drilling, you know, to get the strip ratios down, ensure we had maximum ounces within the pits to do the, you know, any economic study justice. That's why we we embarked on this program to infill the pits, drill out the um, resource extensions, add the new resource. Then we have really all the chips on the table and we'll be able to make the right decisions about, a, you know, a mine plan moving forward and sequencing open pits underground, you um, the throughput, you know, how large should the project project be? How much uh, production profile? Do we do we stockpile the low grade ore? Just process high grade ore, which currently looks possible, and yeah. get the, the grade up even higher. So yeah, lots of positives here, which will significantly improve the economics. So that's why we went on the you know this current big drill program, update the resources, and and then address it, you know, to a new economic study to the to the project. Okay. So that that should lead us then next year into moving the project forward through pre-feasibility, permitting, you know, finalising things like the economic baseline, mm -hmm. um, all the geotechnical, technical, hydrological studies. Um, we'll get into those next year. Unless, of course, we have another round of major discoveries and this the project continues to grow. But that's currently the plan, yeah. Let's hope, let's hope. I appreciate that. It's a good short to medium term viewpoint from here. Uh, you open the door and sometimes those great probing questions come in, Gary, and Manel is asking, do you plan to stay explorers or develop your own properties yourselves? Look for a partner, perhaps sell. Curious to know what your long-term strategy and approach is here as a company. Our plan is to move this forward. You know, it's to develop it, to move it forward, to de-risk it. Um, so we, we are looking to take, and we've already started many of the steps required to put this into production. It has grown significantly and by, with the acquisition, of course, that that took us to another level in regards to size, but we see we it's still it's still the same process we go through, whether it's a small project or a large project, it's, it's the same steps in regards to de-risking. So that's our main focus is to move it forward and take it through to production. Now we are a public company. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there is a possibility that, you know, we could be subject to the market and acquisition. So mm -hmm. that happens, but we, we're not looking at that as our prime. We don't have a full sale sign up. We see with the addition of the right people moving forward and the, the right team that we can we can develop this and move it forward ourselves and add add value to our shareholders. I appreciate that. Thanks for the viewpoint there. Uh, Scott is asking, Gary, when can we expect to see the next set of drill results? Yeah, I'm hoping within the next two weeks. I Actually, yeah. two two. I saw two batches come in just just as I was in the waiting room on the presentation. So yeah, great! If, as soon as we get enough, a bunch of enough holes together, we'll get those out. So hopefully within the next two weeks, and That's fair and enough. And then yeah. we should have a good flow after that. They are starting to come in, trickle in a bit. You know, uh, they're they're starting to flow in a little more steadily now. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Greg is asking Gary here. Uh, can you provide an update on the previously announced six one share consolidation? That's right. So it's gone to at the AGM. There'll be a vote on that. Okay. The shareholders are currently voting. So we are looking to do that. We're looking to go. We've got 550 million shares outstanding now. We're looking to consolidate to about 90 million. Mm -hmm. That should have our share price around, you know, the $2 mark, so just over. We see that as the sweet spot in regards to having enough liquidity, but also just not, to, you know, not been too illiquid. So we, we've we watched enough. We've, we've done a major study on number of other companies that did a similar thing. And that that seems to be the the range you need in to be in regards to, you know, to leverage in your share price without, you know, too much dilution. So and and, being to, and without and also without having enough liquidity. So um, I appreciate that. And, uh, uh, great. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious when the uh, when the AGM is, is held. So it's, it's due to be held on the 24th of June this year. Okay, coming up this month. I appreciate that very much. Um, curious here, Gary, the PEA studies were conducted in 2020 on the Southwest Deposit and on the Garrison Project, both of which confirm robust economics and, and low cash costs. Which open pits and underground mines would you expect to be operating based on that? Uh, yeah, well, the Southwest um, bulk tonnage underground, as long-haul open stoping was, was what was uh, studied. 
So it had cash costs of under 600 US dollars an ounce. So remember that the average stopes were eight meters wide. So these were big, wide, mm -hmm. you know, stopes. So that's why the cash cost was so low. The cash costs at the garrison open pit were about 720 US dollars per ounce. So mm -hmm. yeah, combined, we'd be looking at a, and that, that was looking about 125,000 ounces a year. Mm -hmm. From the underground, we were looking about 80,000. So it combined, you know, about 200,000 ounces at sub 700 US dollar cash cost. Mm -hmm. We see that as you know good, good, robust um, cash costs, and we we think by blending the underground and the open pit, we get the grade up. Mm -hmm. Our capital intensity is significantly less, and we see that starter pit currently as the you know as the way forward and that underground resource. But we have we have Westaway coming in as mm -hmm. another underground resource. We potentially have Garrison if it models up. We have other open pits, everything from. Windjammer South, halfway southwest, fifty-five. They may they may end up being pulled forward in the sequence, but at this stage, it looks like you know the the, the Garrison Oak starter pit and you know potentially the southwest underground as as being the 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 cost drivers, the value drivers. But but that will come out in the study, you know, early next year. Truth will come. I appreciate that very much. Uh, the questions keep coming in here, Gary. Kevin's asking, do you have a targeted mind for your resource at which point you would shift from an exploration focus to pre-visibility and uh, production? Yeah, I don't think there's a magic number that that you need. It, it really comes back to defining those, all of your resources at this stage that could potentially be in the mine plan and mm -hmm. could be in any development option. So you really want to have those on the table. Mm -hmm. You don't want to develop the project and then later find out you've develop the wrong resources and you find something subsequent. So the idea is look at everything that's that's near surface, that is will be in any early years, um, mm -hmm. and get that on the table, optimize your mind plan, look at you know your best options, and then subject those to more detailed studies, you know, pre-feasibility, feasibility, and that that's the way we're looking at it now. So we're really just looking at one more year of you know exploration drilling and then we think we'll have the resources that the near surface, adjacent, you know, close to, you know, infrastructure resources initially, and mm -hmm. that those will those will form the best mine plan initially, and of course, it, this project is going to continue to find ounces at depth, as mentioned. We haven't drilled to depth below many of these open pits, but that will be for you know future resources, for future expansion, and for f future development. Right. Thank you for that. Lots to come. Um, curious because we had that great opportunity to speak with Pierre Lassonde this morning, and he spoke about his criteria for investment. Of course, the first thing he shared and offered uh, to the audience was, you know, management, people who run the company. So I'd like to provide an opportunity for you to share a little bit about your team and, you know, who are the superstars inside the company, because that's where the vision comes from. We know you're leading a great uh, operation, but can you share a bit about uh, uh, the, the dream team that we got going on? That's right. Well, so as you mentioned, it, 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 it takes a, you know, it, it takes a whole village to, you know, to to raise a child, as they say. <laughs> and so besides myself, we have uh, Jason McIntosh. He's the CFO, and, uh, corporate secretary. L Linda Armstrong runs the IR. Kevin mm -hmm. Montgomery's the senior GO. We have uh, Georgia and Randy, Randy Salo, who are the Georgia Sporagos and Randy Salo, the project GOs. So we've got a very good um, base. Um, uh, of in regards to experience, we've got a new uh, field manager, um, David Justice. So we've got, you know, we're, we're growing the team and growing the, t um, expanding the team. We've got a very good base now. Lots of experience in the belt. Lots yeah. of experience actually on the project, and um, lot, lots of enthusiasm there to to move this forward. Good energy. I appreciate that. Um, let me just ask uh, just an overarching question here, Gary. About how how big do you think this project might be in terms of tons mined and, and milled per day? At, at the moment, we're con and I think we're possibly conservative here, but we're we're looking at about eight million ton per annum production. The okay. the PEA that was was conducted by Asenco for O3 mining looked at about four million ton per annum. Mm -hmm. Remember that was only on the Garrison project. We have significantly more ounces than that, and now an underground and open pit from uh, the Golden Highway portion of the project. Oh. We, we we conservatively see. Look, we can we can see the ability to be able to double that, um, eight million ton per annum, producing potentially four hundred thousand ounces a year. Combination underground open pit and um, 
will we see that as the base and we'll, we'll see how that you know if, if that changes with the you know the PEA as we as we as we complete those studies okay thank you for that i always like to provide a bit of time we're, we're winding down our session uh, in a few moments but just to ask an open door question here anything else that we haven't touched on gary or things that have come to mind to share with our audience today i can see one chat here someone's asked about the royalties so on, on the on the golden hire project there are no royalties okay for the majority of our ounces the majority of the new target areas there there are no royalties no encumbrances so we own those 100 mm -hmm. uh garrison has an average about 1.5 percent royalties of which we can buy back just over half a percent so under one percent so there's no no great encumbrances on the project and mm -hmm. most of it's um free and un unencumbered okay Good to know that. Thank you for that. John's uh, offered a question here too, so we'll touch base briefly here to ask, assuming you end up with a 10 million plus ounces resource by 22, will you be looking for a partner to help with turning the resource into a producing mine? That that would be one option. There have been a number of companies that have done that. I think Gold Road's a good example where they, they bought in gold fields to develop their project and mm -hmm. they're, they're now a significant gold producer in their own right and significant market cap and they're out acquiring and um exploring other grounds so that there's definitely one option we'll 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 look at all our options once we have you know the project on the table and we'll see the best way to add value to our shareholders moving forward i appreciate that and uh, honestly there's a lot of hungry questions here because we have the opportunity to chat with you so james asks how early can Manetta potentially be in production it's impressive how many ounces you folks add regularly can this be a 20 million ounce mine at some point any any thoughts or forecast there look we could if if we we dropped the hammer, you know, after the PEA had a project description, we had all the EIA, you know, done and dusted. You could have this permitted in, you know, in 18 months. So you potentially look in 2024, you know, mm -hmm. permitted, studied, um, and, well, maybe finance. I'm not sure on that, but maybe finance. So, yeah, you could, you could be looking at that timeline. Remember, this is this is Timmins, Ontario. There's, there's lots mm -hmm. of projects that have been through have been permitted here in the last few years. We we're already aware of, you know, what path to take and what needs to be done. We're already addressing a lot of that and we'll need to address, you know, more as we move forward. But first thing is get that, it's really the project description. I should point out we are deliberately not going near any bodies of water, rivers, so there's no, we're not affecting any uh, large or moving water body. That that will slow down permitting. So we are aware of what we need to do and what not to do. and. Okay. Good We're time. using the same consultants that many of the successful, you know, projects have used in the area over the years. I appreciate that very much, Gary. It's been a terrific tour and uh, always appreciate the insight and the offering that comes from folks like you that, that run the company. Uh, we'll look forward to watching the company and uh, as it moves forward and look forward to talking to you again, Gary. Thanks for your time today. Excellent.